welcome to this, our third discussion on the law. Firstly, we had an overview, making sure that we understand all the aspects of the law and the problems. Last time we have discussed legalism or the specific concept of the law but not in the way that God wants us to do it. So it's very important that we understand the law correctly. Again, before we start, remember, this is not from any church group, uh, but it's because we believe in the truth of the Word of God. And we want to share that with you. As we ourselves have discovered, we want to share with you. And we believe that God can change everything in our lives through the Word of God only, through His Word, through His Spirit. So let us accept that. Let us be quiet for a while and ask the Father, Creator of all, to give us His wisdom. Father, it's to you that we pray. Our Father, which is taking care of us and every single day, give us what we need. It's to you that we come and we ask you that we need your wisdom. We need your wisdom to understand and to have the knowledge of your law so that your wisdom can rule our lives. Let your wisdom give us today the insight, the understanding and the knowledge that your name can be lifted up. Lifted up so that people can see you are the only God. Amen. As we discuss today the purpose of the law, I think it's very important that we understand um, the reason for the law that was given to us. There are so many arguments about the law is not valid anymore. The law is not for us. The law was only given to the Jews, for the Jews. Therefore, it is very, very important that we discuss the purpose of God's law. For that I want you to go with me in a little story, in, in, in this understanding what God's purpose is. God decided in His foreknowledge and wisdom to set a nation apart for Himself. Why? I believe God created man with His law in our inner being. Man knew what is the will and the standard of God. But every single one lived according to his own desires. And God decided to choose a nation as an example, as teaching, in His plan and will for the nations, for everybody, he had to set a stand. Um, let's face it, God created all men. So God's standard is valid for all men. To me, it's, it's, it's very simple, just looking at that one single fact. God created us, so we are under the standard, the laws, the instructions, the commands of this creator God who created us. His will and plan is made clear through Israel, the nation. Thus, the law is for all. Israel was the example. He was the carrier and giver of the law and standards of God. And in this as well, it's very important to understand the word Israel. Yes, it refers to a nation coming from the man first called Yaakov, which God changed his name to Israel, which means the one or the person 
or whoever or whatever that is ruled by the mighty God. The mighty God rules over. That's the meaning of the word Israel. So if he's your commander in chief, if he rules over your life, you are Israel. Not because somehow through the tribes or through whatever you become part of the tribe, the nation of Israel. But because he is guiding, ruling, being master of my life, I am Israel. This is very important. There is very there is a lot of teachings today about only the tribe of Israel and only if you are part of the tribes and only if you are uh, from the tribes of Israel, then you are saved, then you are part of the kingdom. If we look at the word of God and that which you will see today as well, God has invited nations, tribes, tongues, which is not Israel, which is outside of the people group of Israel but each and every one who becomes Israel by the God who rules over your life let scripture be our standard let the word of God give us a clear understanding of who can enter the kingdom of God in his foreknowledge in his absolute wisdom God has chosen a people why everyone lived according to his own standards and ways after Noah, uh, people just didn't follow God and His standards. Each one had his own gods. Even when they worshipped the true God, they worshipped as they wished, as they pleased. It was never according to the single, the word, the standard of God alone. But there was none living according to His standards, even from the beginning. So he chose a man because he couldn't find a nation to be the stand. So look at it. God decided that people do not follow me and even the law is in their hearts. They do not obey. So let's give him an example. Let's show them how I must be worshipped, says God. Let's show them how I must be served. What is my standard? What is my laws and then God looked on the earth and he find a nation which he can choose and he saw that there is none no one following him so God in his wisdom chose a man and through the man generated a nation which is his nation but it is special for God because he chose the nation as an example and he chose the man, Abraham, through whom he created his nation. And therefore, the main reason and purpose was not to choose a special nation, was not to have a special nation or people for himself, but so that this chosen people could be an example and teach and show the Father's standards to all other nations so that they could serve and worship him in the correct way, his way. And then because he has chosen this nation for this very specific purpose, this nation had privileges. This nation has a covenant and promises that goes with this responsibility to be a testament. That's the main reason I believe that God is so cross with Israel many times. It's because they do not fulfill the standard and the example which God has chosen them for. That is why it is a covenant. It's a covenant because God said, I will be a God to you. It means I will take care of you. I will be your standard. You look up to me and I will show you. But you must be my people, living according to my standards, accepting my rules, my laws, my instructions my commands living according to my standards and commands through which all nations will be blessed so israel became the covenant nation with god so that through israel nations can come and follow him according to his standards that is the reason for israel 
Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 and 3. Let's see what the Bible says. And I will make you a great nation and bless you and make your name great and you will be a blessing. And I will bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Let us just, just look at that part again. In you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. It doesn't mean the families only of Israel. It means all the families, all the nations will be blessed because God has chosen a standard. And He expected us to follow that standard because Israel was the example. So where do we find the standards? Where do we find the example? Only through the example which God has given Israel. God did not give the law. God did not give the standards in the word of God for Israel as nation, but for us, his people. And he used them as an example and as a testimony so that we can see, so that we can know what his standards are. And therefore, the law is God's standard for all his created. Although no one wanted to listen, that's his standard. Then he chose a people as an example. And that way is the right. To become angry at Israel. They missed their creative purpose. They were created as God's standard, as God's testimony, as God's example of His law, His standards, of His instructions. And this point is very important and we must remember that. Because if we see this, we will immediately understand the law was never given to Israel as a Jewish law. It was given to Israel as the standard of God for each one of us. Again, let's look at scripture. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 49. One law will be for the child of the land and for the visitor which stays among them. There's no different laws. There is one law. God has only one standard and one law. And that law is valid for the Jew, for those outside of Israel, for each and every one. The law is His standards. It's His standards for each and every one of us. Let's go to Isaiah Chapter 56, verse 3 to 7. Isaiah 56, verse 3 to 7. Let the foreigner that joins up with Yahuwah not speak and say, Yahuwah will surely separate me from his people. And let the believer not say, Behold, I am a dry tree. Because thus says Yahuwah to the believers who keep my Shabbats and choose what pleases me and hold on to my covenant. I will give them inside my house and my walls a memorial and a name that is better than sons and daughters. An everlasting name I give them that will not be destroyed. Verse 6. And the foreigners who joined Yahuwah to serve Him and to love the name of Yahuwah by being His servants, everyone who keeps Shabbat, not to defile it, and they that hold unto my covenant, they I will bring to my set apart mountain, and I will let them taste joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be pleasing on my altar, because my house will be called the house of prayer for all people. What a wonderful scripture that gives us also the standards of God. What is His standard? It's very simple. Obey His laws, follow His commands, and listen to him. In this portion, God gives us quite a few things which are very, very important for us to understand and to know. From this portion, there are a few important things, but it's it's so important that we will have to look at them because it's answering quite a lot of questions. First one, even though previously forbidden by law, 
By obeying Torah, people receive a special place in the house of God if he's obedient. Doesn't matter who I am. I receive entrance into the will, into the house, into the plan of God by being obedient. The second point is, is three things that is important to God. In this portion, keeping Shabbat. Why? Right through the scripture, God concentrate in every time giving that standard as part of His standards. And nowhere in scripture did God change that. The fourth commandment of the Ten Commands. The law about Shabbat is the only one that starts with remember. Why is this law so important that God had to emphasize in the words that He gave to remember that? Don't forget that. Because it's important to God. Because that shows if I am really serious in obeying, following the instructions and the commands of God. The second point, hold on to the covenant. Don't forget, you are people who must be obedient. And thirdly, to choose that which is pleases God. These three things, keeping Shabbat, hold on to the covenant, and choose that which pleases God. We shouldn't be thinking of things of the earth. God says, should not our mind, our concentration, the important things for us be that which is of His kingdom? Not which is from this world. And the third point which God shows us in this wonderful piece is the foreigners. All people and nations can have part in the kingdom of God. Not only for one nation, the same conditions apply for everybody. God desires people to obey Him so that they can become part of His kingdom. Remember the Bible is clear. He does not wish any person to be destroyed. He desires everyone to follow Him, to be obedient, to be saved. Let's look at Romans chapter 3 verse 29. Romans chapter 3 verse 29. Or is God only a God of the Jews? And not also of other nations. Yes, also of other nations. Verse 30. Because there is only one God who declares the circumcised through trust and the uncircumcised through trust as innocent. Um, this is very, very, very important. There is only one God. God created all of us. So how can a Jew and other people have different standards? There is one standard for all of us. That standard became fully described. That standard became full in Yeshua when He came. But there is only one standard for each and every person because God created all. God did not create man and each one with His own standards. God created man, the total mankind, with one standard. That is His standard. This is a very, very important point which we should remember. Is God not only God of the Jews? No, it cannot be. Because He, the Creator God, has created all of us. He is God of all the nations. And His standards are true for all nations. Let's look at Mark chapter 2, verse 27. Mark chapter 2, verse 27. And He said to them, Shabbat is made for man, not man for Shabbat. It's a simple rule, it's a simple standard. Shabbat is made for man, not man for Shabbat. And there's many discussions over this verse. I think it's very clear and simple. God decided man needs Shabbat. God gave man a place of rest, a time of rest. And we cannot only rest once when Yeshua comes, once in eternity we will have our eternal rest. Yeah, that we will have. But that didn't help this week. When we had a 24-hour you know, day every single day. We had a tremendous busy schedule. We had tremendous busy time. It didn't help for now. We needed Shabbat to have a complete rest. And how complete in Him it is. Please note. 
Shabbat is made for man. He did not say Shabbat is made for Jews. Shabbat is made for all men. God knows that we need it. This law is for man. If you're part of the human race, God says the law is for mankind. Not for the Jews, for mankind. By obeying God, I don't become another nation. By obeying God, I am true to what God has called me to be. His people obeying His commands as my God. But Father had a very special purpose, as we already said, as an example with Israel. What was this purpose? What is the purpose in choosing this people? The first reason why God has chosen Israel as a nation is to establish trust and worship in one God only. In other words, to be set apart. Every nation served his own God, served his own tree trunks. Every nation served idols. And God needed to establish an example that there is only one God. There is only one standard to be set apart for this one God. Let's read Isaiah chapter 43 verse 12. Isaiah 43 verse 12. It is I who announced, saved and proclaimed. And there were no strange God among you. You are my witnesses, declares Yahuwah, and I am God. Now, as many verses we could use in the Bible, but this will suffice. He's the only God. He is the one true creator God. Is this one true creator God, the God who set His standards, our God? Then we will follow His standards. Second reason why God called a nation as an example is to preserve the moral standards in mankind. His creational purpose to, to have the character, the standard, the will of God and live according to the character of God. Let's look at Exodus in our Bibles in Exodus chapter 18 verse 20. Exodus chapter 18 verse 20. Teach them then the commands and laws and show them the road on which they must walk and the work they must do. Um, teach them. Show them. This is my standard. This is how you should walk. This is what you should do. This is my standard and I'm your God. A little bit from Exodus chapter 24 verse 12. The Bible says, Yahuwah said to Moshe, Come up the mountain to me and stay there. And I will give you the stone tablets with the law and the commands which I wrote to teach them. God says, I wrote the standards. I wrote the commands. Come and get it. Give it to the people. This is my standard. As we said earlier uh, in another DVD, if it was written down and given by God, that is His standards for all people. Not for the Jews, not for a nation. His standards are for all those who says, the living Creator, God is my God. Then this God has given you His standards. Are you obeying His standards? Not man-made standards. Not again falling back into that which man has created to no sign. Not the church, not the rabbis, nobody. Are you follow only that which God has given? 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 makes it very clear what is his law. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 says, Every writing written by the Spirit is profitable for teaching, for correction, for guidance and for a course in impartiality and uprightness. So that the man of God can be perfect, perfected for every good deed. How important is this? Every written word, and I believe it speaks of the total Bible, total word of God. It's profitable for teaching, for correction, for guidance and for a course in being obedient to Him. 
Do we read His will? Do we find out what His will is for us? The people of Israel were also chosen for a third reason, and that is to protect the complete Word of God, orally, written, in whatever way which God Himself has given to Moshe, which Moshe has written down. So although God has given the law orally to Moshe, He commanded him to write it down. So we will speak about that which is written down. Previously we spoke about that complete in, in, in a complete way. already gave you all the verses. That which is written down, that's the will of God. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 7. Listen to me. You that knows impartiality and uprightness, a people in whose mind, will and emotion my law is, do not be afraid of the accusations of man and do not be frightened by their curses. Was God saying, listen to me, you that know me. I know the laws in your mind, in your will, in your emotion, in your emotions, I have given you the stand. God has placed that in man. So the law is already inside man. And Romans chapter 3 verse 1 says the following. Romans chapter 3 verse 1. What therefore is the advantage of the Jew? Or what is the advantage of circumcision? Much in all respects. Firstly, that to them the word of God are entrusted. Because what if some of them did not trust? Do their lack of trust nullify the trustworthiness of God? Of course not. Romans 3 says very clearly. It is an advantage because the word of God was given to them. Through them we can understand the truth of the word of God. That was God's choice. He chose a man through which he created a people through which he brought his standard to mankind. The fourth reason why God has chosen nation Israel is to introduce the anointed one, to prophesy, to bring the prophecies of the salvation of God. He is anointed as king, prophet and priest. And God has given through the prophecies of Israel the salvation plan and the coming of the salvation in Yeshua. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3. Isaiah 40 verse 3. A voice calls out, Prepare the way for you in the wilderness. Straighten his road in the desert. A highway for our God. Well known verse, well known prophecy. And although there are many in the Bible, we suffice for that. God used Israel to prophesy the anointed one coming as he is using the whole word of God that Yeshua is coming again. Now, the word we normally translate with law is Torah and means instruction or direction. Now this word Torah can be used in scripture in many different ways and it's very very important for us to when we study scripture to make sure what part of law it's talking about. What is the meaning of the word Torah when we read the Bible? So it's very important to see. Mostly it's translated with law. But that law in that specific verse refers to what? And that is important. In the first place, Torah can be the complete scriptures. Whenever God speaks about His law, He speaks about the complete scriptures. Tanakh and New Covenant. That's His law. Secondly, He can speak only of the Tanakh. And the Bible speak mostly, it speak of the law and the prophets. It speak furthermore only of the first five books of Moshe. Or it speak of the complete written law of God, wherever it might be. That's his will, that's his Torah. Or it speaks as all about all his guidelines, the standards, the rules that God has given and as interpreted by the rabbis and therefore shall call it. Torah, but by that he means legalism, because there is no specific word for that. 
So it's always, always used as law and even for a wrong law, but the same word is used, there is no other word. So it is important that we will understand in Scripture, especially in the following DVDs, what part of Torah it's speaking about. And lastly, the word Torah in Scripture also speaks about a very specific law, a specific law, or one law, which is specified in Scripture. I want you to remember, God has a standard. He has a specific standard for each one of us. That standard we should follow. Remember, no teaching can be accepted if not given by God. If His Word doesn't specifically teach something, it most probably is made up by man. So let us concentrate on what God is telling us. It must be a teaching given in Scripture. No part of Scripture can be contrary to another part. If there is contradiction in Scripture, something is wrong. And I can guarantee you, in the translation we are doing from Scripture, there are no contradictions in Scripture. It complements each other. It shows us the complete will of God. The new covenant cannot speak against anything in Torah or in the first five books of Moshe. It has to confirm, fulfill that which God has said because God's word is one. There is not another word and there is nothing else which God has given us through His word but His word. God's purpose and plan with man never changed. Therefore, His standards and His law never changed. The method to complete that plan, which is written in His standards, cannot be changed. So the laws, the standards, the plan of God with man always stay the same. Are we part of His plan? Do we follow the standard? the rules according to the law of God. He created Israel to give you and me a standard. Through them we can find the standard which God has given us. Let us accept the standard in the word of God as God has given us. I tell you that God cannot lie He promised to save his people, he never changed his mind. Today he still calls them my people, my people, my people. Can't you see your ways? My people, my people, you walked far from me. I'm still the same. Desire to get